Welcome to our module on SAG values. In this video, you will learn a more refined definition of the various SAG values and how to communicate when custom SAG is appropriate for a bridge design. At the end of this lecture, you should be able to 1. Understand vocabulary for different SAG values. 2. Understand which SAG values correspond to different parts of the construction process. And 3. Predict how custom SAG values will change the forces on your abutment. This video will primarily cover the first two learning objectives, and subsequent videos will explain the custom SAG analysis process. Now, let's take a step back and explain cable SAG. We, want to preserve, we wanted to preserve as much of the original terminology as we could from B2P, but some of the terms can be a bit misleading. Therefore, we also assigned a number value to each SAG definition. These number values correspond to the order in which the cables are in each of these SAG geometries. You can always find uh, a refresher on these definitions in the EIA Bridge Binder Volume 2 design. So, SAG number one is our construction SAG. This is synonymous with our minimum SAG and is always taken as a default 3% value. Construction SAG is the SAG in which cables are initially hoisted cable must be equal to or under construction sag, because if they hoist above construction sag, there is a risk for winch failure, early sliding, or erection hook failure. This is discussed more in the construction analysis portion of the course. But after hoisting the cables up to or below construction sag, we wait 24 hours to let out the stretch. As the cables expand and contract with temperature and remain under loading, the various steel strands will settle, changing the uh, area of the cable cross section ever so slightly, but this compounds across the length of the entire cable and will change the actual SAG value that it's set to. Now, SAG number two is hoisting SAG. The term hoisting SAG is a bit misleading because this is actually the value we lower the cables down to after the 24 hour waiting period. This is the SAG we set SAG to, or the SAG we lower the cables down to. SAG number three is our dead load SAG, also known as design SAG. This is the first predicted SAG value, as it is the predicted SAG value after the entire walkway is complete. This is how much the cables should SAG under the dead load and is the input to our custom SAG analysis tool, hence why we call it design SAG. Finally, SAG number four is our live load SAG. This is the theoretical SAG predicted under maximum loading and will likely never happen during the lifetime of the bridge. Most communities don't even have enough people to replicate this condition. Trust me, I've tried for the sake of research to get this replicated to a degree, and we haven't even had enough people. So currently there's no explicit equation that relates the SAG values. So live load SAG isn't always 1% greater than dead load SAG. It depends on a few factors such as how close we are to our factor of safety for cable design, our dead load, I'll write these out for you, our dead load value, um, the elastic modulus of the cable or how much the cable has been used, and the area of the cable in its cross section. Uh, we can't just easily and arbitrarily increase or decrease our SAG because of these dependencies. Hence why we have to use the custom SAG analysis tool, which is based on a finite element analysis method that I'll explain in the next lecture. So for example, one thing I want to leave you with is, uh, for example, consider you have two 50 meter long bridges. If you build one with four one inch cables and the other with five one and three eighths inch cables, the bridge will not deflect the same when decked and ultimately loaded. The 5, 1 and 3 8 inch cable bridge will be much stiffer, deflect less, and have lower sag values, which corresponds to higher horizontal tension. Therefore, we have moved to custom sag values to increase freeboard, increase serviceability of the bridge, and more accu accurately model cable force transfer into the abutments. <clears throat> In addition to this, Cable SAG also involves understanding the main span geometry. So various equations for calculating the main span geometry under different loadings can be found in section 4.1 of the bridge binder. <laughs>